You read the video title, it's not clickbait. The way other JavaScript frameworks like Quick, Svelte and so on, Preact, Solid, whatever, try to beat React is where it's most vulnerable and that is performance. React is really good, it has a great ecosystem, but with its virtual DOM that some people like the creator of Svelte called Pure Overhead, it's not the most performant by any means. But imagine if it was, imagine if React was really performant. What else could you do better than React? Ecosystem? Probably not. Developer experience? Maybe in some aspects, but mostly probably not. And I don't want to say React is a perfect framework if it was more performant, but it would be seriously hard to beat. And that might just be the case. There's a library going around that is called million.js. And the claims million makes are pretty huge. It makes React substantially faster by creating a more optimized virtual DOM in something called a block model. But if something sounds too good to be true, it most likely is. At least I was very skeptical at the beginning if this is such a good solution. And while there are some caveats to this, I was pretty surprised. Let us take a look at example number one. And what we're about to do is we're gonna do some performance testing ourselves in React. We're gonna use a Rust-based performance testing tool for that. It's called OHA. It lets you send a bunch of HTTP requests to your locally hosted website and then shows you performance statistics like the success rate, how many requests were done, and most importantly, how many requests per second your web application or whatever web app you're testing can handle. That is the value that matters to us most, requests per second. So example number one, a very plain counter component in React as we all know it, put into our app component in React and nothing more. That's our app. We're gonna do performance testing on that with OHA. Let's run the test for two seconds and the result is 1960 requests per second. That is pretty good, but also again, this is a very plain app. Let's compare this to the million.js version. All we need to do is wrap or counter in the block that we can import from million.js. It's super straightforward. And then let's run the test again. We're gonna give it two seconds, the exact same parameters. And here's what I found surprising. If you take a look at the requests per second, it's lower actually. It's just 1,800 something compared to the 1,960 we had before. Interesting. So these super simple use cases like the counter is probably not where million.js really shines. Instead, let's switch over and take a look at an example they provide in their documentation in a much more realistic environment. And that is a table with a lot of rows. Usually you'd have pagination, but it makes for a very nice comparison between what React traditionally does with its VDOM and how the optimized version from million.js in its block approach compared to that original React version. Example number two makes the use of million.js very clear. Let's render out a table. And this table is gonna have three columns with an adjective, a noun, and you know, it, it doesn't really matter. And the important thing is we are also rendering out a lag radar. If I change a value in the table, take a look at what happens to the lag radar. We can see there's a very small red line appearing on the radar as soon as we change the value and then it goes back to normal. So it displays the current lag in real time to us. If we use plain React for this, at first it works super well. There's no visible delay. However, as soon as we get to higher entries like 500, 700, 900 or 1000, React really starts to struggle. You can see on the lag radar that it's getting red, it stops for a moment, and only then is the table entry actually rendered. That's pretty bad. Again, you'd have pagination in normal use cases, but it compares this use case very well. So if we go up and up, it starts lagging more and more. And at one point, I'm not sure if you can see it in the recording, but my browser actually briefly crashed and then was able to recover itself. Let's see how we can optimize that. And with million, all we need to do is define the table in a custom React component that we can then call with a block function that we again get from million.js. That's pretty clean. To render out the items, instead of mapping, we're using something given to us by million.js, which is a for each. Syntactically, it works just like in Svelte. Now let's take a look at the result. After we've abstracted the table and done the for each the million.js way, you can see if we choose to increment the table and show more elements, the lag is still there at high elements, which is pretty much unavoidable, but it is significantly lower than in plain React. 
Interesting, so that second use case plays way better into the strengths of Million.js than the first use case, the counter, we initially took a look at and performance tested ourselves using OHA. I'm really excited to see where this goes, because if React performance wasn't that much of an issue anymore, React would honestly be, as I mentioned in the very beginning of the video, pretty hard to beat, right? If the ecosystem is as good as it is, if the developer experience is as good as it is, and the learning resources way surpass any other JavaScript framework. For example, Quick, I tried to learn it, barely any learning resources for it. Unfortunately, even though Quick was pretty fun, React, a whole different story. There's so many learning resources for React and I'm really excited to see where this goes. I'd be super interested in hearing what you think. Do you think this might be the future of React? Do you think this might just be a hype that's gonna go away in a couple months? Let me know what you think in the comments and then I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one and bye bye.